what's up ghouls, it's Blaze and welcome back to my channel. Today is day 5 of my 31 days of Halloween and I'm showing you some recipes for sewing or for Halloween, um, just some kind of like autumn meat dishes that you can make. So the main reason behind this video is um, recipes for sewing, um, which is the last harvest in the witch calendar. Um, so these are, every year for sewing I like to have a feast um, where I prepare loads and loads of food. So these are recipes that you could use for that feast. You don't necessarily have to make all of them or you could literally just make one of them, whatever. I'm just showing you guys some recipes that I have found. Only one of these I have ever made before this video, the deviled eggs I've made five or six times but the rest of the things it's the first time I've ever made them so it has been pretty fun. Um, so the reason I picked these dishes, so let me just run through them. So the first one we've got <coughs> is a chicken casserole but cooked in a slow cooker which makes life so much easier. The second dish we've got is um, creamy potatoes with garlic and thyme. Then we have braised red cabbage and apple and then lastly deviled eggs. Um, so all the recipes will be linked below. Um, all of these are vegetarian because the chicken casserole is with corn. You could make some of these recipes vegan but I didn't have the products available to make these recipes vegan. So the reason I picked these types of or these recipes is because they are great dishes for the last harvest because they're including things like carrots and potatoes and onions and stuff like that and then the herbs used are either rosemary, thyme or parsley all of which are good in spell work for divination, um, purification and spiritual growth and just spiritual, um, spiritual power. So all the herbs used are useful for sewing as the veil between the living and the dead is at its thinnest so a lot of spiritual work is key. So yeah that is why I picked these recipes. So I'm going to stop talking so we can get into the video. I don't know how long it's going to be, hopefully it's not too long. But if you want to see how to create some cool recipes for sewing or just for Halloween, then keep watching. This is um, some food options for sewing feast. So we've got um, creamy potatoes with garlic and thyme. We've got a chicken casserole served with barley. This is a vegetarian version, so it's um, corn chicken. So I've got that served up in a big stock pot, or you could pop it in little peppers with lids on. Um, so it looks kind of like a pumpkin, which is super, super cute. And then we've got braised red cabbage with apple, and then deviled eggs topped with parsley. Okay, so for our chicken stew, we're going to need four bay leaves, um, one large onion, onion chopped up, three to four carrots chopped up. Um, you need about four chicken fillets, however, I'm using a chicken alternative, or like a vegetarian alternative, so this is corn, so I've just used six mini fillets, two large potatoes chopped, 40 grams of pearl barley. You're gonna need about two teaspoons of garlic paste, salt and pepper, 700 millilitres of chicken or vegetable stock, your choice. And then about a teaspoon each of thyme, parsley and rosemary. Okay, so I am beginning by heating up a pan uh, with oil in. I'm then going to add my onions, my carrots and two to three teaspoons of garlic paste. It just depends on how much garlic you like. So I've fried that for five minutes. I'm now going to add my potatoes, my rosemary, my parsley and my thyme and I'm going to cook that for another five minutes. finished frying so I've just popped that in the slow cooker for now. I'm now going to fry up my chicken or corn for five minutes. Um, the time may vary depending on whether you're using chicken or a corn um, or a vegetable vegetarian substitute. 
finished cooking and I've popped those in the slow cooker with everything else and I'm just going to add in the last bits of my ingredients now. So I'm going to pop in my four bay leaves, salt and pepper to taste, my pearl barley and my chicken stock. Once you've done that, you can pop your slow cooker on high, depending on how long you've got, um, how long you've got until your meal. So you can either do this for three to four hours on high, or seven to eight hours on a low heat. And a low heat is going to give you loads and loads of flavour. Chicken's going to be gorgeously soft. However, I do not have that long, so I'm going to be doing this for three, maybe three and a half hours, depending on how hungry Jake is when he gets home from work. So once you've given that a nice big mix in, it's all mixed in together, you double check you've added all your ingredients, then you can pop the lid on, make a note of the time, I always forget to do this, so it's half past four now, so by about half seven, eight o'clock, that is gonna be gorgeous. And that is that for the chicken casserole. Okay, so for the deviled eggs, you're gonna need some mayonnaise. Now, depending on how many um, deviled eggs you're gonna make, you're gonna need, obviously, varying amounts of mayo. We've got 10 eggs here. I'm probably only gonna make six because Jake and I cannot eat that many uh, deviled eggs. Got horseradish, horseradish sauce. I can't talk horseradish sauce and mustard. Um, it does ask for horseradish mustard, but I couldn't find that, so I've done this before and I've just mixed um, the sauce and the mustard together and then some salt and pepper as well. You can add some chopped up onion however I've run out of onion so it's uh, th this recipe is going to be without. So I boiled my eggs for five minutes so they should have um, not a super hard shell, um, not a super hard yolk but soft enough that we can pop it out easily um, but hard enough that it's not a soggy mess. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut my eggs in half long ways and pop the yolks out. And with those yolks, I'm just going to pop those into a separate bowl. Okay, so now I'm going to mash the yolks together using a fork. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my mayo and I'm going to add three tablespoons of mayo. Add one teaspoon of horseradish sauce and I'm going to, um, I can always add some more later. I'm then going to be adding one teaspoon of mustard, pop in a little bit of salt and pepper, and mix that all together. Okay, I'm then going to taste a little bit of it just to see if that is the right kind of thing I'm going for. Okay, that to me is pretty fucking good. So, the next step. With clean hands, I'm then going to take my mixture that I've just made and I'm going to carefully spoon it into the little holes of the egg whites. You then obviously display those in a much nicer way, but that is how to make the deviled eggs. You could also um, garnish these with a bit of parsley, but I seem to have lost mine, so never mind. <laughs> Okay, so for our red cabbage, we're going to need some sugar, I think it's roughly about three tablespoons, two tablespoons of water, two tablespoons of vegetable oil, you're going to need two apples that are cut up, I cut mine up a while ago so they're a little bit brown but it should still be fine, about 550 grams of sliced or shredded red cabbage, um, I've used one red onion, the recipe didn't specify red or white or brown, I don't even know what the other onion is, but red's my favourite so I've gone with that. You need some salt and pepper and some vinegar. Okay, I didn't realise my camera was recorded, but all I've done is add my um, cabbage and my onion, and I'm gonna fry that until it's wilted. I'm just gonna fry it for a couple of minutes until it, I don't know, till I feel like it's done. Okay, so now I feel that that is cooked through. I'm really sorry about the noise, but obviously that's naked noise and my oven's on too, so it's very noisy. But the next step is I'm going to add my apple and the recipe calls for two teaspoons of water but then after that I'm supposed to let it simmer so I'm going to experiment and add a little more than two. Okay, I've gone for the full glass. Let's hope this works. So I'm going to add that back onto 
the hob, but I'm going to turn it down from a high heat to about a five. Give it a good mix. Then I'm going to add my salt and pepper. I'm going to cover that and let that sit for about 20 to 25 minutes. Okay, so my cabbage has been um, simmering for about 25 minutes and there is probably still a, a bit too much water so maybe don't use quite as much water as I did but hopefully it will be fine. So I'm going to start to add my vinegar and my sugar and I'm going to add it one tablespoon of each at a time, mix it in, see how, it's, see how it tastes and then see whether I need any more. Start with my sugar. Okay, I'm going to add another tablespoon of each. I'm add another two of vinegar and one of sugar to see how it tastes. Okay, I'm going to add half a, tea, half a tablespoon of sugar. And I'm going to put the lid back on and I'm going to leave that to cook for another five minutes. Okay, so I've left it on the hob for about five, six minutes, and that is pretty much it. That is done, so that can be served up and is ready to go. Okay, for our potato side dish, we are gonna need about 100, 800 grams of um, sliced potato. So I weighed out 800 grams and then peeled it and sliced it and whatever. Um, the recipe called for certain potatoes, but I couldn't find them in my store, so I just bought baby potatoes. I'm not really sure why, but I did. Um, you're going to need two tablespoons of thyme, two tablespoons of garlic. Um, it did call for normal garlic, but I've just got granules because they're so much, so much easier to use. You're going to need cream. Now, you could make this a vegan recipe by using uh, dairy-free cream. However, my store was all out, so I've got just normal cream. So this recipe currently is vegetarian, but not vegan. Um, and then I have my normal dairy-free butter. Now, you only need the butter to grease um, your tin. So... Um, you don't need loads and loads of butter. Okay, before we get into this, I've mixed my thyme and my garlic together in a little, I don't know, it's from a pestle and mortar, but I don't know what the bulb it is. Whatever the bulb it is, that's what I've mixed it in. So I'm going to start off by taking my potatoes and I'm going to just cover the bottom of the tin with them slightly overlapping. Okay, once I'm satisfied, I've filled, um, I've used about a third of my potatoes. I'm going to use a third of my thyme and garlic, and I'm just going to sprinkle that all over. Obviously, if you don't like too much, um, too many herbs or too much of a flavour, you can use less than the recipe calls for. Then I'm going to take half of the rest of the potatoes that I've got and build another layer. Okay, so once we've built our next layer, I'm going to use about half of the remaining uh, thyme and garlic. Then I'm going to build my final layer. Then I'm going to add the last bits of garlic and thyme. Okay, so now it's time to add the cream. On the actual recipe, it calls for 300 millilitres. However, um, in the comments section below, one of the people who's made this before said that they use 600 millilitres of cream so that there's enough of a sauce. So I like quite a thick sauce or a lot of sauce. Um, so I'm going to add three. I'm going to add about half of it, see how it looks, and then decide whether I want to add any more. Okay, so I've used about half. Um, I'm going to fill in the little bits that haven't got any cream. Okay, so I've probably used about 500 millilitres there and that's looking like enough for me. You can see it all rising up. Um, so the last step is I'm going to season the top with some salt and pepper. Now before it goes in the oven, I'm going to cover this tightly with tin foil. I'm going to pop that into the oven for about 35 minutes and then um, I'm going to check on it. Okay, again, sorry for the background noise. The oven is mega noisy. But the potatoes have been in for 35 minutes. Um, the potatoes themselves look good, but I feel like the cream needs a bit longer. So instead of putting them back in for 35, I'm going to do 40 minutes. And this time you put it in without any tin foil. Okay, so I put the potatoes back in the oven and they were in the oven for about 25 minutes. And the top is looking a little bit overcooked, so I took them out. Um, I don't know if it's because I used a lot of cream, maybe if I used less cream they could have stayed in longer, I don't know, but they seem fine. So that's all that there is to it, um, I really hope that you guys have enjoyed watching this video, I have definitely enjoyed <laughs> eating the food, I think Jake has enjoyed it too, so that's good. Um, I'm not much of a cook for the rest of the year, 
uh, I generally clean and Jake cooks so it's been fun to experiment and try some stuff out I still could not do it every day <laughs> that is a lot of effort I could not cook every day so when I do cook I do enjoy it but yeah I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video let me know down below if you try out any of these recipes and please tag me on Instagram or Twitter I'd love to see my handle for both of those is at macabre underscore goddess um, but all my social media is in the description box as always so yeah Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.